this is my farewell to this place, my home. And yeah, I'll see you all in Japan. So for some context on this trip, it will be my very first trip as a solo traveler. So I'm completely stepping into new waters with this adventure. Anyway, the very first day heading to the airport, I did not sleep at all the night before because my flight was early in the morning. But I also wanted to adapt my sleep schedule before I landed in Japan so that I didn't waste any time, you know, having to adapt my sleep over there. But having a lack of sleep had its consequences, especially since I am unable to sleep on moving vehicles. And I I will soon find out that planes are way worse than any other vehicle I ever tried to sleep on. So I headed to the airport around 2 in the morning. The air was nice and cool and had that smell you associate with vacations and adventures. My spirit was high and the sleep deprivation was getting overridden by the excitement. So it took about an hour in total to get to the airport and while getting there, I realized how empty the streets were. It made me think about how this will be a new beginning while everyone else was asleep. So I made it to the airport and so many things were racing through my mind, such as my flight time, my family that I will have to say goodbye for two weeks, how will I use the bathroom on the plane? This will be a recurring theme in the future, I promise you. But the biggest issue that came to my mind and one that I had been prepping for weeks was the TSA. Dun dun dun! I've studied my enemies for years to this point. I have learned every jujutsu there were to learn. I opened my domain and absorbed all that I can about the TSA. I was ready to face the strongest boss I have ever faced before. I said goodbye as I headed to the abyss to fight the gatekeeper to my adventure. I approached the TSA with all of my knowledge of taking my shoes off, the liquids, my electronics, the pat downs, I was ready. So they just told me to place my bags on the scanner and walk through the metal detector and the pat down was just seeing if I had anything in my pockets. Like I was fully expecting a full shakedown as if I owed the man money. Once I got out of the TSA, I turned around to my family as I headed to my adventure, the beginning of a new point in my life. Hello. So I just got past TSA and I'm trying to find, where's, where's, I need to find my terminal. Oh, it's right there. But it's like four in the morning. So yeah, the only thing that's really open here is a uh, is, uh, McDonald's and a uh, lottery machine. So yeah, they have a Chili's here. Wow, I'm gonna explore this place. See what's up, you know? You know, first time TSA was fucking scary. I would not recommend doing that. But yeah, this is the beginning. The beginning of my trip. I'll start recording when something interesting happens. Anyway, I headed to explore my new environment of the airport. It was a simple airport, one hallway for both back and forth traffic. The only thing that was open at that time, which was around 4 a.m., was a McDonald's. So I decided to get myself a hash brown and a frappe. Hey guys, so just got the got the McDonald's. Get the frappe. Hey? It's pretty good. It's just normal frappe, hey? but five bucks <laughs> for a medium, for real. So let's try the hash brown. I almost spilled the entire fucking frappe. I'm really shit at this. Yeah, and there are people nearby, so I'm not I'm not really used to this. Bye for now. So after that, I waited near my gate and watched the airport come to life as passengers and crew members alike started their days. Planes were getting set up for takeoff. 
passengers were rushing to their gate and I was just sitting there watching it all unfold. It was a pretty beautiful view for a start of the journey. After that I looked around the airport but there really wasn't much except a popcorn stand and an Auntie Anne's, the McDonald's and for some reason a random chilies. There was this interesting vending machine that was called Farmer's Fridge. It had a bunch of animals on the side so I first thought it would have been selling meat or some kind of animal product but no it was just selling a bunch of salads so I was kind of disappointed with that. Yo I am boarding now finally after so long I am finally boarding so this is gonna be my first time on the plane so let's see how this is. I'll see you when I Go on the plane and run my seat. Morning. Morning. Yo, I'm on the plane, I'm in the seat. So yeah, uh, the seats are pretty small, not gonna lie, so I probably can't record here. Especially if someone's sitting next to me. So yeah, uh, I guess I'll see you in Montreal. So I did not record any of my plane ride or like transferring because I was actually physically dying from the plane rides. I have never rode a plane before so I was not prepared for how my body would react and the pains that I went through, my god. On my first plane ride, my stomach became so gassy over the entire ride and the turbulence did not help with it. It felt like I was in a washing machine just getting thrown back and forth. The only reason why I managed to survive was because I made a friend with the person sitting next to me and we just talked about history and culture which was pretty fun the second after landing i got some food at the airport and my god the prices in montreal montreal's airport is so disgusting like like i got a poutine and which is a fries and gravy and cheese and a drink which costed me 40 canadian dollars or 27 usd and that's not even the worst part when I was paying, I asked whether or not the prices were in Canadian or USD, and the cashier said it was in USD, so I was about to spend $40, 40 USD dollars on some freaking fries. I mean, they were good, but not $40 worth. So thankfully, it was actually in Canadian dollars, which made it slightly more bearable because it was only 27 USD, which is still quite a lot, but I mean, I was starving at that point. So like, yeah. So after I headed to my plane from Montreal to Tokyo, I didn't record this part either because I was also suffering, but for a different reason. So the plane ride was 13 hours long and I am unable to sleep on vehicles. I'm pretty sure you know where this is going. So if you have never been on a plane, it is very similar to taking a bus, but with a lot more people and a lot bumpier because of the turbulence. The entire ride, I only got four hours of sleep and that did not help my sanity at all. So I predicted this way before because I know myself, I just can't sleep on moving vehicles and I knew planes would not be any different. So to help with this, I downloaded some anime music and packed some books because I thought I would spend the majority of my time reading and watching anime. But I did not factor in that I would be so mentally drained that I would be unable to even watch anime, let alone read during the plane ride. So the entire flight, I just played this Tetris game and listened to music, which sort of helped my sanity but not really because i was also thirsty the entire flight and the only water bottles they had were these small party bottles that you get at like a birthday party and stuff which is not enough for the 13 hour flight i just had to keep asking them and they gave me like three bottles at once and I had to ration it out like I was in World War II or something. So when I finally landed, it felt like the gods blessed me when I when my feet touched the ground. I finally made it to the place I dreamt about, but also the fact that I got off that hellish plane ride. But there was one issue that plagued me when I landed. I didn't have internet. I didn't have internet. My phone didn't allow me to put my SIM card that I bought for the trip and into my phone and it wouldn't work. It didn't give me internet. I found out later that I needed 
to tell my mobile phone carrier to unlock my phone beforehand, but I didn't know that beforehand. Apparently Boost Mobile does that. Some other carriers don't. I don't know why Boost Mobile does it. I don't know why. So I was just stuck in the airport for like a few hours just trying to figure out how I could even get my internet. So after internally panicking for a bit, I called up my family, which was about 3 a.m. for them, and asked them to call a Boost Mobile to unlock my phone because I needed internet. How else was I going to navigate? But because it was 3 a.m., they weren't open. But, I mean, I was prepared for this because I printed out a bunch of, like, maps. And I also took screenshots of Google Maps at the airport so that I could just navigate like that. So, not the end of the world, but not the best case scenario for a solo traveler, let alone the first time someone's been in Japan. Hey guys, so uh, I kind of fucked up here, um, so uh, my phone isn't unlocked, so I can't use a SIM card, so I don't have any internet, so now I have to navigate Japan without internet, so this is going to be a challenge in itself, so first of all I need to get, <coughs> get uh, a PASMO card, so I need to figure out where that is, and then I need to get cash from a 7-Eleven, which I think I see one over there, or is that a Lawson's? I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Uh, let's try to do this. Okay, so right now I'm just trying to find where I'm supposed to get this Pasmo card. It says, this is in Terminal 1. It's from the, <coughs> it's some Skyliner. Um... Some Skyliner thing. So uh, I'm trying to figure that out right now. Is that it? What's up, guys? Uh, I found an ATM and I found where to buy the Pasmo port. So I'm okay. I'm gonna get some cash because they only accept cash. Okay, this machine is being really loud. Okay, okay, I get it. Okay, okay. I get it, I get it, I get it. I get it, man. Oh man, I've been going through so much today. Anyway, I got the cash. So, bro, my bag is like a mess. My bag is, this suitcase is actually bad. This will seem cleaner when I edit it, so, um, yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna go buy my PASMO card. Yo, what is up, guys? Uh, update to this video. Uh, I got my PASMO card. Pretty cute characters. Sanrio, Hello Kitty, and her friends. Their character looks like the thing from, uh, Medical Magica. And I got yen, so uh, time to find my my train. Uh, that's going to be so much more difficult than what I've been doing now. So uh, I'm going to get ready and uh, let's go on this adventure together. Okay, um, I think I'm getting on the right line. So <clears throat> I have no idea. This is the KSA line two three. So. I'm gonna assume it's this one. So, wish me the best of luck. <coughs> I really hope it's, I really hope it is. I really hope it's this one. I'll record on the train if I get on the right one. So yeah, uh, wish me the best. <laughs> I'll see you at the hotel. The train ride took about an hour from Narita Airport to Asakusa, where I was staying. When I walked down to the train station, it felt like I was transported to another world. The city felt so different, but also so very familiar from all the content and videos that I've just consumed over my entire life. And it felt like I just spawned into a Yakuza game. Uh, here's some photos I took outside the train station. And when I was taking the photos, I just stood there for a few minutes, just taking in the view of the buildings 
the restaurants, the lights, and just the people walking by. I truly made it, and now it was time to truly make it to my hotel so I could go to sleep. So I walked a bit more, and thankfully, they had a free internet in front of the Saxa Shrine area. I've always seen videos of this place, and to be in front of it was quite surreal. So I used a free Wi-Fi to find directions to my hotel. Thankfully, it was only a few minutes away from that area. So whenever you check in a hotel, all you basically need to say is check in onegaishimasu and then either present them with your passport or they'll present you with an address form that you just need to fill out. That much I expected from all my videos I've watched. The part that I wasn't expecting and that many people don't really talk about is that you have to put your room card into a slot to turn on the lights and appliances. I didn't know this so when I went down and asked the staff to help me they must have thought I was retarded because they came in the room and said oh you put you put the key in the slot I was like oh I'm retarded so uh, after they did that uh, I thanked them and bowed and you know apologized for my stupidity and after that incident I unpacked my stuff laid in my bed opened my curtain and just looked outside to the city to the country that I've always wanted to go to finally being here I thought to myself that after so long I finally made it to the country that I've always wanted to see to the country that I wanted to go to oh uh, then I collapsed on the bed from exhaustion and then it was officially uh day one in Japan when I woke up and uh that's for the next episode of this series so uh I'll see you in the next episode matane yo weebs